Hello, my name is Simon Freitas, one of the co-hosts of the Freitas Effect podcast. Welcome to Conversations with Creatives. These episodes are brought to you in collaboration with Entropy Theater for Entropy Fest themed emergence. Entropy Fest is a collaboration of local emerging artists in the New England area, and the Freitas Effect is serving as MCs on the weekends of May 20th through the 22nd and 27th through the 29th. Ticket information is available on all our social medias as well as Entropy's social medias and in the description of these episodes episodes, but I'm not going to keep talking. Let's get the artists talking. James, please introduce yourself to the audience. What are your name, your pronouns? How you would you like people to identify yourself or to know you? Uh, my name is, well, first off, thank you for having me. Uh, happy to be here. So my name is James Wilkinson. I am a kind of all around theater artist who works in the greater Boston area. I am a playwright, I'm a director, I'm a theater critic, I'm a producer, I've, I've had a little hand in everything. Um, so a lot of different avenues we can go down in this conversation. Uh, pronouns, he, him, his. Um, and yeah, that's, that's usually where I start. When would you say you first identified as an artist? I was actually trying to pinpoint this the other day. I don't know that there ever was a date or like a specific moment when I said like, I am, you know, like kind of planting my flag and saying, I am an artist. I think it is something that just sort of like slowly happens, you know, over the period of time of creating things. And I do have a specific moment I know when I identified myself as a writer, which was actually kind of interesting. Like uh, it was really a couple of months before the pandemic uh, started. <laughs> I, I was flying uh, somewhere um, to see some family members and I had been, uh, there was a theater piece I had just seen like two days before and I was trying to finish the review and I was using the flight to, you know, as a time to like sit there and just type the damn thing out. And uh, the woman next to me as, as, you know, the flight was wrapping up, she, we were striking up a conversation and she said, oh, are you a writer? And I said, yes. And it was just sort of like a that was the first time really, even though by, at that point I had written plays, I've written a number of things, but it was interesting that um, it's easier to call yourself a writer when you're constantly putting things out into the world, which is what a blog and theater criticism kind of helped me do. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I feel like for myself, it's more of a, no, this isn't about me. This is about you. This is your interview. So no, 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 keep no, it no. You. It's, got, it's gotta be about both. There's a back and forth here. <laughs> what were you gonna All say? Right, fine. I was gonna say, I feel like I, I didn't want to identify as an actor. I, I wanted to identify more as an artist because it was like, I can be vague if I'm an artist. You know, it's like, mm. but if I was an actor, then people would expect me to do, you know, just acting. Like if I did other stuff, then they would be like, well, what's he doing? I thought he was an actor. So do you feel like there's any yeah. pressure if you identify as an artist opposed to picking a specialty? I think, I don't, and maybe these are just my own prejudices, but there, to call yourself an artist is, I don't know, there's so much baggage kind of associated. Like we all kind of know that asshole from college who's sort of like, I don't know, very pompous and, you know, calling themselves an artiste. Mm. And I suppose for my own baggage, there is something kind of nebulous about that. When you say you're an artist, it's very like, well, what are you doing? What does that mean? It kind of, it is very nebulous. Um, it, it is, I, I think I do in some ways do find it more empowering to kind of say like, no, I am a writer. I am playwright, director. Like it's it's sort of, it has that direction of like, well, this is what I'm doing at this moment, you know, and, and over my artistic career, I have, you know, swapped hats a number of different times. And I think that's, you know, good to do, but there's something more concrete about that in, in my mind for some reason. So how would you say you found your path into the arts world? <laughs> I stumbled into it ass backwards. <laughs> and now I'm flailing, trying to keep my head above water. <laughs> I, I, I first became uh, interested in theater as an art form in high school, but really I, I think in, in, um, in kind of that ass backwards way. You know, I, I wasn't someone who, I, I feel like a lot of young theater kids, you know, they, they find that first musical that they really love and, you know, that kind of brings them into it. I was just, um, I don't know, maybe just in some ways an expressive kid who where people said like, oh, maybe try theater, you know, kind of a comment you'd get once in a while. And auditioned for a play in high school, did it once, or, you know, started in that first time, it was a Neil Simon comedy and it 
the first time you kind of get that laugh and you kind of get that taste of really a, a new way of interacting with people because the performer and the audience, like that's a whole, it's a very specific thing to kind of have running through your mind. Mm-hmm. And, and from there, it was definitely something that I was interested in and pursuing. And then in college, really started to get a lot more serious about it. I think I think I'm just intensely curious about a lot of different things. You know, I, I really I, I love movies. I love music. I, I do love theater, and I love reading. I love books. You know, I'm I'll I'll t- take a sampling of anything, and it's it's always just been very exciting to me to find this new creative person and learn about what they were trying to do, what their body of work is, and, and I think that curiosity is probably what's brought me along in many ways. You mentioned you started in theater in high school and then in college. Did you go more into writing in college or were you still performing? That's what I started off to be. So my, my, I, I loved doing theater in high school and I always knew that I wanted to be writing. So when I went off to college, it was very much like I'm looking for a place where I can like start writing. Mm. In my freshman year, I auditioned for one or two things, like just as, you know, as an extracurricular. Mm-hmm. But I, I didn't get into them for one reason or another. And then I didn't really, I guess the second half of my freshman year, I, I finally was like, oh, maybe I'll take a theater class because I was kind of interested in high school. And then just never looked back. I really, in college, relearned just how much I loved doing it. And at that point, it was like, oh, maybe this really, the it, it's not just writing, but it's writing and theater, that that's the path for me. There, that there's something about how these two things are intertwined. Um, that's really jazzing me up in a way. With college and high school, did you take specific writing and theater courses or were you a major? Like, how did you educate your skills? Well, in high school, it's funny because I don't think in high school I necessarily had showed any particular talents for writing <laughs> necessarily. <laughs> I, I think I was definitely passionate about, you know, I was the one of those kids that, you know, every time the English teacher is like, and now here's the new book we're reading, everyone else groans and I'm there silently cheering. Like <laughs> we're finally tackling Jane Austen. Yay. And which I think uh, certain English teachers, you know, when they're dealing with a level of apathy, uh, certainly they're happy to have that. But I don't think I necessarily wowed anyone with with my writing skills in in high school. And then in college, I did once my sophomore year, once I did start realizing, oh, I think theater is something I want to kind of fold into this. I did take a playwriting class with two professors who, whether they know it or not, and I think they do, kind of really changed the course of my life. They really, uh, some of the things, it was a playwriting class and, you know, we were turning in week after week, these 10 minute shorts. And even those, I, some of them I don't think were necessarily spectacular, but they they did both kind of take me aside and say, kind of give the hint of like, I, I think you might have a talent for this. You know, you might, this might be something you want to kind of push back a little bit. And throughout other classes and things that I did with them, they were it's like, oh, are you writing anything? What are you doing? And that really kicked me off in a way and, and, and got me thinking seriously about it. And then I'm the type of person that, you know, once I start thinking about something serious, I become obsessive with it. And, and then here we are. <laughs> here we are in the future. I'm curious, outside of college, did you, have you taken any courses or have you continued to educate yourself in any kind of structured way? Not in a structured way in the sense of like taking classes, Mm -hmm. but I don't think you can be an artist and not constantly be trying to learn more. I I, I really don't. And and across all mediums, I mean, one of the great things about theater, why I think it is probably the highest art form is the way that it combines so many other different mediums, dance, uh, writing, poetry, sounds, music, you know, everything together. So although I don't, I, I haven't taken classes, I'm, I'm always kind of scrounging those, you know, those lists of like, you know, 25 best books or the hundred greatest so-and-sos of the 20th century and like, oh, oh, there's an artist I don't know about, let me learn about them. And, and you know, that's, I, I love, you know, one of the great things about the internet age, there are some major drawbacks to the internet age. But one of the great things is that uh, YouTube 
for example, is, is essentially like one big masterclass. You can, if there's a playwright or any an artist from any art form that you like, you know, I, in college and, and afterwards, you know, I'll type in Edward Albee, like, to, in, you know, just kind of listen again and again to like maybe these kind of talk back long form things that he did or that others did. And um, so you get to, so you are kind of hearing people talk about craft uh and how that might apply you know and then you, it, it's it gets your brain working and and helps you continue to think in different ways but you yeah i, I mean artists i i always think it's just so sad when particularly in theater when you talk to theater artists who kind of say like oh yeah i don't go to see much and, you, and you're like really like you don't hmm. isn't the point that we liked going to see the stuff yeah like, why, why wouldn't you try to take why wouldn't you try to take in as much as you can? Because, because someone might be able to show you something new. And then, mm -hmm. and that, and that can only help your own mindset and, and help you expand and maybe push yourself in new and different directions. Yeah. Like whenever I go see a new play, even if it's not new, whenever I go see a play, I just feel like I'm always just a little bit inspired or just a lot a bit inspired, you know, like, uh, ever since COVID's kind of been opening up a lot more theaters, like, you know, or since COVID's been dying a little bit, you know, like theaters have been opening up and I just, you know, I went to go see Into the Woods the other day at my at UNH and I just felt like, wow, people are on stage again, like people are singing and it's, it's life, you know, like I can act again, maybe like, <laughs> you know, it's just, it gives you that energy. It does. And, and again, just the, the way that it expands your mind. I mean, one of the positives about the, you know, being theater being shut down is I, I've spent a lot of time diving into movies and there are so many movies just kind of teaching me about how narrative works. And like there, there's this Japanese noir from the, I think the forties uh, called Branded to Kill, which has just kind of blew my mind because there's this really, it's sort of a, it, like it's a noir, it's about a hitman, but there, it kind of like like halfway through it sort of like breaks reality and there's this expressionistic thing with butterflies and and I was just I've been turning it over in my mind ever since and it's just like oh that's a different way you can tell a story how might that translate to theater you know similar to, for a more recent example uh like I had never seen the Miyazaki movies mm. the uh things Studio like that Ghibli? and it's yeah, Studio Ghibli. And it's been incredible because I'm watching the, you know, like if I watch like say Wally, -E, like mm -hmm. Wally -E makes me cry, but I know why it's making me cry. Like there's a character I'm identifying with it. Something bad happens to the character that makes me feel sad. I watched like Ponyo and just burst into tears at the end. Like, and, and I was just like, why is this affecting me the way that it is? I have to know mm -hmm. more. And it's really, it, getting me to think differently about narratives and what's important in a story. So it's, um, it, it's, you know, that's, that's a whole other journey. Uh, uh, but it, again, it's, it's discovering new artists, new art forms and, and looking at different types of art forms um, can only, can only help expand your mind and make yes. you a better artist. I love that. Especially how you don't, you know, like you mentioned, like you don't have to go to a class to learn, like you can just kind of expose yourself to these different forms and just kind of absorb the information that you get. It's all out there. I mean, again, one of the positive and the negative of the internet age, it is all out there. You just have to go for it. So have you considered experimenting with other types of art forms? I actually, I, I do think my brain works best for theater. I, 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 I do think primarily, I do think, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's a, one of like the kind of masterclass things. I, um, my last uh, play that went up, like when I was trying to like finish, like doing rewrites and everything, it was funny. I was watching these like talks Paula Vogel did like again and again, cause I don't know, it was just like giving me strength somehow. <laughs> uh, and she has a bit where she kind of talks about how she thinks that like everyone is a playwright. I actually disagree. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I think some of us are not, but I, I think we're all creative, but kind of the forms of that creativity, mm -hmm. I, I, I think there is something to like, um, you know, I, I do love and appreciate music, but my brain just doesn't click into it in a, in a way, the way it does, you know, when I start to get those impulses of, uh, of something to create, like things flash in, in images and dialogue, like I, I can't think in those, in the slightly more abstract ways you do need for music. So I think theater, 
definitely in those forms is is primarily where my brain's at. But I've also I, I've kind of defended you know the the criticism that I've written for the Boston theater scene. I absolutely think is a form of creativity. It's it's a different form of creativity, but it is learning how to verbalize the experience of watching something and taking it in and trying to convey that to another person, I think absolutely is, is, is something that requires a certain amount of creativity. I was always kind of describing it with theater or, or rather with playwriting. When I start to write a play, it's because I have, a, you know, there's a particular feeling that I want to express. And then to get to that feeling, I have to kind of since this is an audio podcast, I'm going to have to describe what I'm doing. I'm sort of drawing a spiral around the points, you know, and that's how I bring the audience to the feeling. We're sort of like always circling around it and I'm trying to bring them closer and closer slowly. Whereas criticism, same thing. There's a feeling that I want to convey, but now it's a straight line. I got to get you to the point as quick as possible. So that's interesting. I never really thought of criticism as a form of creativity. But I think it can be. I, I mean, I think there are a lot of people that are kind of just, you know, hitting buttons like, you know, we've all read those reviews of like, <laughs> so and so is masterful. Da 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 is wonderful. But I, I, I think when you, when it really is an examination and an interrogation of, of that viewing process and, and what it's doing to you as a viewer, I think it's every bit as creative as any of the other arts. Yeah, I mean, sorry, I'm just, I'm reflecting on my sister and I, like, every time we go to any kind of art for, like, show, like, we'll even just hear someone playing the piano at, like, a pr public performance, and we'll just start being a critic. So it's like, you know, that creative side of your brain just turning on when you're just like, ah, well, now this could have been like this, but, you know, now I'm thinking like this, and, like, should I be doing this? But also... You're an artist. You can never turn it off. Like, you know, like. <laughs> well, but I think that's it. That, I mean, exactly. You, you are an artist. You're always going to be doing that. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. You should embrace it. And, and thinking, you know, thinking critically about the things that you're taking in. And, uh, and and especially for art. I mean, this is how kind of the chain of art through history is is created. People viewing something and going, oh, okay, well, if, if they did that, well, what if we pushed it further in this direction? And actually we did this instead. And that's how, that's how it all goes, man. That's the name of the game. So, speaking of uh, the name of the game, could you name what you are presenting at Entropy Fest? I'm not, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna give you the biggest boast right now. Ozzy and I read your play and I, I freaking love it. Like, oh my God, <laughs> yes, yes. So what, what are you presenting? <laughs> uh, oh, thank you for that. My, that, that's gonna satisfy my ego for weeks to come. You have no idea. Happy to help. Um, <laughs> So I am presenting a short play that I wrote called Horse, Horse like the animal, H-O-R-S-E. It is uh, concerned with two characters uh, who have uh, kind of telling, retelling something that has happened to them. Uh, they were attending a masquerade ball. They escaped from the masquerade ball into the nearby woods where something happens, which irrevocably changes them. <laughs> Hence uh, the emergence theme of, of Entropy Fest. And I think I will leave it there because I, I think you have to experience it for yourself. Um, <laughs> yeah. the, the tricky thing about my stuff, I, I always feel, and I, you know, maybe this is me blowing smoke up my own ass, but I feel like if I give you the two sentence description, it kind of sounds insane. You need to, you need to just kind of like go through the whole thing. I promise you it's going to make sense when you come out the other end, it's going to feel inevitable, but you got to, you got to go through the whole thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'll, and I'll tell the listeners right now, this is, this is going to be a, this is going to be an experience. Like I, oh my God, when Ozma and I were reading the play, we were like, what is, what is happening? And then at the end we were like, what is happening? This is great. Oh my God, this needs to be in like, please. And then when it got chosen, I was like, yes. So yes. Oh, like, oh. <laughs> I, I can only fuck it up from here. The twists and turns, man. <laughs> like, I was not ready. So, <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. I don't want to give it away, but yeah, there's just the themes of, like, darkness and, like, the, oh, my God. The, the, the uh, it's like that last moment of, like, what gets exposed. Like, I, in college, actually, I 
had a, I took a Shakespeare class. And one thing that has always really stuck with me throughout my kind of artistic writing life. And, and I think what I, the kind of one of the North stars that kind of directing me towards what I want to do is the teacher talked about Shakespeare and said, one of the really the big things of Shakespeare is that he, the way he he puts people in moments of extreme stress where they kind of break. So you think of like King Lear, you know, at his most, you know, he's in the storm or, you know, Macbeth at his most um, paranoid towards the end. And it's in that, and I think it is kind of in those moments of extreme stress and surreal circumstances that we do get to see something human, uniquely human. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, this is, this is my attempt to try to, to try to see if I can carve that out of someone <laughs> so that we can all, we can all view it and see it and think about it and go from there. Mm -hmm. Cause it just feels like, oh, like such raw emotion. It, gonna hit you to the core like that's yeah because when I, when I was reading that last story like I was also reading for both characters with Azeb so like I was switching back and forth and I was like wait a second what's happening and this and this and this. oh so like oh my god like I just I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep trying to give it away because I feel like I'm gonna slip up and I'm gonna I'm gonna expose but you know <laughs> just be there end of May audience please you guys will not be disappointed evening show like because the dark fingers crossed they won't <laughs> no you won't you will not this is going to be great uh <laughs> <laughs> but other than horrors what are you working on i am desperately trying to finish my new full length as in like it's a complete evening play I have been working on it. I mean, again, it's been one of the odd little gifts of the pandemic is that I, I was really doing a lot of work as a critic and, you know, some of my, my playwriting had kind of fallen to the side, you know, happily fallen to the side because I, I really enjoyed what I was doing as a critic. And it, it really was kind of like nourishing certain creative impulses in me. Then everything shut down. <laughs> and, and this play that was kind of on my shelf, it was like, well, now you have nothing but time. So I really sat down and really set to work on like, okay, solve the problems that were not, you know, that, uh, that you had, get to the ends and, and I finished that draft and then I did another draft and I did another draft. So I'm in the middle of, um, in famous last words, I think I have finally cracked what needs to happen in act two. So I'm in the middle of working on act two. <laughs> and, and once this is done, I am hoping either over the summer or maybe in the, the fall to do some sort of like maybe workshop production of public stage reading so we can start to get some of that audience interaction and feedback. Uh, and the, the play uh, is called M colon. That's how you know it. That's how you know it's good. There's a colon, uh, M colon refractions from an evil act it's it's about a woman who is in a foreign country in a foreign french speaking country uh and the hotel staff is up to no good and i'll leave it there you're intrigued right yes oh my god <laughs> <laughs> well the name got me and then the foreign country got me so now i'm like double yeah. god I'm like <laughs> got it. yeah yeah i'm looking forward to that you, you got to hit us up wherever you uh, end up posting it. But, oh, I'm sorry. Were you going to say something? No, I was going to say, because like Joe and Kaylee will absolutely, you know, be in the loop. So to, they'll they'll spread the word, I'm sure, once, once uh, if, if we manage to get any movement. But I believe in you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so where can people find your work when you do get all the movement on these pieces? So I am... Uh, couple different places. So my, I have a theater company in Boston, a fringe company. We haven't produced anything in a while, but it is, the website is still up, Exiled Theater. So you can check out exiledtheater.com um, for, for that company. Uh, and there's some, there's some fun stuff there about our past productions. Uh, my blog for theater criticism, bostonstagenotes.com. Um, you can check out latest reviews there. And hopefully soon I'll once I finish this current draft, I'll, I'll, I'm hoping to get back into criticism um, more routinely. Uh, and then finally, I'm using Entry Fest to uh, finally kick my ass into creating a personal website that has all of the, my writing and, and creative uh, theater work. Uh, so last night, I just finally registered the domain main, jameswilkinsonwriter.com. Uh, so by the time this goes up, if you go to jameswilkinsonwriter.com, 
Uh, it might still be under construction, but there should be something up that you can look at and 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 check out some some samplings of of different things that I've done. Heck yeah, yeah. Getting your the website together is always hell, but it's also it, re it requires such a degree of like self promotion that I'm just not comfortable with. Like you kind of have to you kind of have to blow smoke up your own ass. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you do. <laughs> Which I'm not really comfortable doing, but it's it's got to be like a monument to your own greatness. And I, I just kind of sit there like, why? Da, da, this is this is really too much trouble. It's <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't we be thinking of something else? But but you know that's part of the process too. Self promotion. Yeah. Come come, come look at my wares. I mean, you do work super hard on the things that you create, so it's like people deserve to see it. Like. <laughs> get it out there. And then if you don't have $2,000 to pay for someone to create the website, then it's like, well, I guess I got to make it. <laughs> Square, Squarespace, baby. It's, you know, they're not giving me any money, but it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> what advice would you give to emerging artists? I, I, I think the big thing, too, first off, we kind of already touched on it. I think you always need to be developing. I, I, I think you always need to be finding new things that interest you, new things in the culture, the new things out of your culture, getting out of your comfort zone, getting into, it, it's all about empathy and, and learning about different types of, of, of people. So always be developing, always be uh, curious about new things is, is a big thing. I also think just the best piece of advice I got before starting a theater company. I, a friend, my co-artistic director and I were, were talking with another theater director. And he said, the piece of advice he gave that I thought was so wonderful was he said, you know, ask yourself, why are you doing this? No one needs you to do this. And that's kind of true. And, and he, he wasn't saying it in a mean way. He's just saying like, there's no one needs you to do, but nobody needs your play. There are thousands of other plays. There are thousands of other writers. Someone else will fill that hole. But what's, I think, important about telling yourself that is that every time you kind of want to make a compromise and say, well, I'm going to make this more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? More, more mainstream, more, I'm going to, I'm going to sand the rough edges off of this. Don't <laughs> because we don't need it. So it, why not have it be the thing you want it to be? And I think, you know, for a long time in history, people like lots of different artists have been told, hey, this is, this is too gay. This is too black. This is too Asian. This is too, uh, too feminine. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think, fingers crossed, I, I think we are hopefully going to start seeing more people who don't stand up down those types of edges, creating work and getting stuff out there. So that was a very long-winded answer, but uh, don't sand down your edges, <laughs> I think would be the second piece of advice. Like it, no one's asking you to do this. So if you're going to do it, God damn it, plant your flag down, plant your flag down and do it. Yes. The way you oh. want to. I love that. Oh, Cause I've never heard it said like that. Like no one no. needs you to do it. So you better do it your way. It's just so inspiring because it's just kind of like Good. usually you hear people saying like no one needs you to do this don't do it it's like no no one needs you to do it so if you're gonna do it you might as well just do whatever the fuck you want like <laughs> yeah, and this, well and this could be terrible advice i mean i'm not <laughs> keep, keep in mind i'm not making a living as an artist <laughs> right now at least then if you fail you know you failed on your own terms doing ex exactly the way you wanted it to be done you know there are just so many pressures to be mediocre, to make it a little bit more, again, sand off those rough edges and and make it not not too biting, not too sharp. And life's too goddamn short, man. We just came out of pandemic. The, this art form has been taken away from us for two years. Like let's blow the goddamn doors down. Yeah, before it gets taken away again. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like that's so. what I always heard of like, uh, you know, like black people and women, like it's like we we just might as well vote as much as we can because we don't know when we're going to have that right taken away. It's like, you know, do whatever you can, because people might not want you to do this in the future. Like people might take this away from you in the future. It, you know, the world might take it away in the future. So keep it authentic to yourself before you don't have that opportunity. It's like, ah, 
Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, the world. There are so many things. Uh, sometimes I get on a, a soapbox <laughs> with this kind of stuff. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining the interview. I'm really excited to see the to see horse in live theater. Like it's gonna be amazing. I'm really, you know, I'm excited to meet you in person. I've never, you know, since we've never met in real life. Yeah. It's gonna be great to meet people. <laughs> Is there anything that you would like to say to the audience before we go? I just I'm I, I hope you come out and see all all the things all the things in the fast I I'm just really excited that there I think there isn't enough artistic cross pollination in Boston theater that like what this is going to be so I I you know I, I was talking with some of your cohorts and I I just think that this could be really special so I I think absolutely come see it come see all of it um and talk about it and come come see this come see people yes good for the soul come see it come donate if you can't come see it make a donation it is a fundraiser so we would like your funds and or we would like the raise um <laughs> but otherwise uh stay safe out there y'all we love you